All right, folks. So in today's video, we're going to take a look at upgrading the firmware on these two radios. They are the iLunes HA1 UV. It's a newer dual band handheld ham radio that's become quite popular in the past few weeks. Now you might want to ask, why do you want to update the firmware there, Smoking Ape? And the reason is because there's a firmware update and I feel like I'm missing out if I don't have it. So I'm going to show you how we do that. Uh, before we get started, I do, by legal reasons, have to say that I was contacted by the fine folks at iLunes or Rativis, depending on where you're from, and they asked if I would do some video reviews of this particular radio. And of course I said yes, because I like radios and I like doing video reviews. What that means is they send them to me free of charge. If you're the type of person that is triggered by sponsored content on YouTube, I'd suggest you go watch some cat videos. Design. Build and innovate with PCBWay.com. Offering high quality PCB manufacturing and assembly at unbeatable prices, PCBWay.com ensures fast turnaround times and reliable worldwide shipping. Whether you're working on a prototype or full scale production, we provide the precision, value, and support you need. Trust PCBWay.com to bring your ideas to life. Visit PCBWay today. All right, all that being said, what you're going to need is your programming cable. And my radios came with a programming cable, and I'm pretty sure yours will too. And if you take a look at this programming cable, you have your standard USB that you plug into your computer. And then, because these radios are waterproof, they use this type of connector. So on the side of the radio, you have a screw there that you're going to need to take out. This piece comes off rather easily. And then this piece just slides in and clips into place. Oops, I had that backwards. It just slides in and clips into place, and then you put this screw in. Now, here's a radio that I've already got all set up and connected to the computer. And when I turn it on for updating the firmware, you want to press this top button right here on the side while holding the PTT button. And that puts this in the DFU mode. That stands for Device Firmware Update Mode. Real quick, I want to turn this baby on, and I want to show you something. So if I hit Menu and I hit menu again while it's on radio, and then I hit up, I go to this thing called radio information, and if I hit that, you can see a whole bunch of stuff there. And under firmware version, it's 1.01.10005, and we're gonna to update to 006. Okay, here's the product page for the HA1UV, and if I click right here where it says support, right up here in the upper right-hand corner, it takes me down to this thing on the bottom and it says support and there's a couple things. I can hit firmware and software. Number one is the CPS for x84 systems. Then you have the firmware here and then you can see this one actually ends in 09. So it's a newer version uh, than the one that I downloaded a couple days ago. And this says Retiva CPS version 100x86 and that's for the x86 platform. You, da you download the CPS version that's appropriate for your computer. I don't know what computer you have, so I can't tell you which one to download. Um, and then you install it, and it's pretty simple installation. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're just going to download this thing, and then we're going to do our update. Okay, on my C drive, I just created a folder, and I called it iLunes HA1UV. You can do whatever you want. And this is the executable that I downloaded for the uh, CPS, and it's actually not installed. You just double click on it and it runs. It may tell you that it's not signed and you're a grave danger and risk by running the software. And I just picked run anyway. Then I took the firmware and I updated, I'm sorry, I extracted it into this folder. You can see that I've got a couple of different versions. The one that we are interested in is right here. The 20250101109. That's the one that we're going to be installing. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn this radio off and then I'm going to carefully press this top button and I'm going to press the PTT button and I'm going to turn this baby on and it's going to come up in DFU mode. And there we go. Not so exciting, but you have this red light at the top. Now I'm going to double click on that software and I'm going to run it. Okay, so here's the software and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to pick con device and I'm assuming that means for connect device. So when I do that, I get this dialog box here and it's asking me for my port. You can go into device manager and see what port your cable is installed to. Mine is COM3. So once I pick COM3, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to hit model 
and I'm going to drop that down. I'm going to pick HA1UV, and then I'm going to hit OK. And it's doing something on the radio. So you can see the screen turned on, and it's saying CPS read, and this light is blinking. Okay, now in the software, it's telling me that it read successfully. And here's a nice picture of my radio, and I've got all this stuff on here. And I can come in here and make changes if I want, but I don't want to do that right now. What I'm interested in doing is going over here to operation and picking firmware. And it's telling me to turn off the device and press and hold both the PTT and PF1 buttons at the same time and turn on the radio to enter the mode for flashing firmware. I think I did that, but maybe reading the radio messed that up. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to browse to that file that we were looking at earlier. Okay, so with my firmware selected, what I want to do is I want to come down where it says download, and it says download application to the flash. And I'm going to go ahead and click this. And it's doing something. You can see that there is a counter going across. Let's take a look at the radio and see what it looks like. Okay, so here you can see the radio. The screen is still blank, but this light has changed from red to green. That tells me something's happening. Let's go back to the software and see what's doing. And I suspect this is going to take a few moments. Just about done. And it's finished, and it says download firmware successfully. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click OK. All right, what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at the radio and see if it took. Okay, so we're back at the radio, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to turn this baby off. If I can figure out how to do that. And it's powered off. Let's power it back on. It's on. I'm going to go into the menu, and then I'm going to pick radio, and then I'm going to go up because it's easier. And I see radio information. I'm going to hit that. And then you can see right there that it updated it to uh, 1.01.10.009. So it looks like it took. Anyhow, that's going to wrap this video up. I want to say thank you to iLoons for sending me this radio for my consideration. And I want to say thank you to everybody for watching. If you have questions, comments, suggestions, and or recommendations, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond.